Okay, thank you very much. And uh, a great thanks to the organizers for, uh, yeah, for having this event and for uh, letting me present uh, a series of lectures on computational representation theory. So this is one of the topics I have been involved with uh, for a very long time. And uh, so and it will be five lectures. And today I will mainly talk about representations and characters. Ordinary character tables, so about ordinary character theory and how to compute character tables. And always for finite groups. Okay, so G is always a finite group. And for the time being, F is just any field which allows me to introduce the basic notions of representations uh, over any field. So a linear representation of a group G of degree D is a homomorphism from G to GLV, and V is a D-dimensional effect space. So this is what we would call an F representation uh, or a representation of G on V. And uh, as Alexander Hulpke already pointed out, uh, we view the elements of GLV as acting from the right on the vectors, so it's the same group, but the interpretation of the product of two automorphisms is reversed. That's the only thing we change. If you want to do computations with representations, you choose a basis of V, and then, uh, of course, if you represent all the automorphisms coming from the group G by matrices, you get what is called a matrix representation that you can work with, provided you can work with field F. And one of the most basic notations uh, in representation theory is that of an irreducible representation, but it's easier to, um, to define when a representation is not irreducible. So if, it's, if the vector space is trivial, so this is in a sense the most trivial case, but of course if you want to do uh, quotient spaces and things like that, you have to, induce this, uh, to include this case. And, uh, and if, it, if V is not trivial, if there is an invariant subspace, and invariant subspace means invariant by the action of G, that is to say that uh, all representing automorphisms for, for the group elements leave W invariant. Or equivalently, if you choose a compatible basis, then you get, uh, well, I'm using row notation, you get an upper block triangular matrix, uh, which works simultaneously for all group elements, the same shape for all group elements. And then you also obtain new representations if the representation is reducible, one on the invariant subspace and one representation on the quotient space, modulo the invariant subspace. So from a reducible representation, you get new representations of smaller degree. And if X is not reducible, it's irreducible. Okay. Then there is a basic notion of equivalence of representations, two representations of the same group G over the same field F, but on possibly different vector spaces are equivalent. Well, if the vector spaces are isomorphic, and if this isomorphism commute, commutes with all representing automorphisms, okay? Or if you want to think of uh, matrix representations, an uh, equivalent way to state this is that there is a suitable basis, there are suitable bases of V and W such that the matrices for X of G and Y of G are similar to each other and simultaneously with one conjugating element. So here are some basic facts about uh, representations. There are only finitely many irreducible F representations of G up to equivalence. And the number of these is bounded by a group theoretic invariant, namely the number of conjugacy classes of G if the field has characteristic zero. And the number of conjugacy classes of G uh, containing elements whose order is not divisible by the characteristic of the field F otherwise. So these for the, 
for the for the practical session for for those of you who want to compute all the irreducible representations to know when they are finished. And so the basic question in representation theory for a given finite group G and the given field F is to classify all the irreducible representations of G, of course, up to equivalence. Well, we have heard about uh, uh, this morning about finite simple groups and that uh, all sensible questions in group theory can be reduced uh, to questions on finite simple groups. Of course, if you reduce the question to a finite simple groups, you have to know uh, the relevant information about the finite simple groups. For example, all their maximal subgroups or all their subgroups as it comes to or all their representations and so on and so forth. So this is one of the tasks I have been uh, involved in. Classify the irreducible representations of all finite simple groups over all fields. And of course, for the sporadic groups, we want to use computers because there is no general theory where we can really embed the groups inside a series of groups. OK, to simplify this first uh, question of the classification of the irreducible representations, a good idea is to look at characters. So if you have a representation, the character afforded by this representation X is just the map which sends a group element to the trace of the representing matrix or automorphism on the vector space V. So this is now just a function from G to F instead of a function from GLV, uh, from G to GLV. And of course, since uh, conjugate elements or similar matrices have the same trace, uh, this character is constant on conjugacy classes. So in fact, it's just a function which is defined on the conjugate set of conjugacy classes of the group G. And it's clear that equivalent representations have the same character because uh, traces of, equivalent, uh, of similar matrices are the same. Okay, just for uh, purpose of uh, to have a good uh, notion, an F character of G is a character of some F representation. So if I say F character or character, I always mean the character of a representation, and I, I can specify the field F with it. So if you have an irreducible representation, the corresponding character is called an irreducible character. And... Uh, well, it is more or less trivial by if you have this uh, picture in mind. Um, if you have a reducible representation, so you have x of x on w of g and x on v mod w of g, that the trace of this matrix is the sum of the trace of this plus the sum of this. So you have this equation. And of course, there are only finitely many irreducible characters of G. But I don't have to say up to something, just as maps. Because uh, equivalent to, the equivalence now goes to equality, which is a tremendous uh, simplification. If you have to check things not up to equivalence, but up to equality. The set of irreducible characters of G is linearly independent as maps from G to F. Every sum is a, is a, is a every character is a sum of irreducible characters because you can uh, iterate this process. This is nice. Two irreducible representations of G are equivalent if and only if their characters are equal. So this is true without any restriction. This is nice because now you don't have to check for equivalence, but just look at the characters. And even more is true if the characteristic is zero or does not de or divide the group order. Any two representations are equivalent if and only if their characters are equal. And therefore, in order to classify irreducible characters up to equivalence, it suffices to classify or to find or to characterize. So in order to classify irreducible representations up to equivalence, it suffices to classify characters up to equality. Okay, and now the theory divides into two big sub-theories. One is 
if the characteristic is zero, and for the sake of uh, simplicity, I will assume then that the field is algebraically closed, and then I might as well assume that it's the field of complex numbers. So this is for the rest of this lecture, essentially. And the set of irreducible characters, there are finitely many. Uh, we take representatives of the conjugacy classes of G, and in this case, this K is the same as this one, so we have exactly as many irreducible characters as we have conjugacy classes. And then we just evaluate characters at the uh, representatives of the conjugacy classes, and what we get is a square matrix called the ordinary character table of G. Here is an example, the alternating group A5. This is the, the character table, and of course there are two entries which are complex numbers, but uh, they did not fit on the slide, so I have abbreviated it. So one is this, uh, uh, so these are uh, these uh, complex numbers, A and star A. And then on the top row, there are names for the conjugacy classes. Uh, the first letter indicates the order of the elements, and the second letter uh, if two elements have the same order, then uh, they are distinguished by a second letter. So this is somehow the atlas notation. Yes. And here I have written representatives for these conjugacy classes. So in this ordinary character theory, uh, at least as far as finite simple groups are concerned, one wants to find or to describe all ordinary character tables of all finite simple groups. And this is almost done where, of course, only the experts know what uh, is behind this almost. And of course, I don't want to bother you with all these details. For alternating groups, uh, this work has already been achieved by Frobenius and Schur a long time ago. For groups of Lie type, it's green, Elinie, Lustig, and mainly Lustig Linie Lustig and Lustig and, and later Shorji, who have done most of the work to describe. So in particular, what is known is all the degrees of all the irreducible representations for all finite groups of D-type and most of the character values. And one can point at particular groups and then particular elements inside the groups where, are, where there are some issues. So this is the book which collects all these character tables for the sporadic simple groups and some other small groups. This is the famous atlas of, uh, yeah, it's, oh, 30 years old, yeah, but still <laughs> very timely. But all these character tables are contained in, in GAP and also in Magma, in online version, so that you are able to work with them if you want to. I'm not... Okay, GAP, we have already heard about GAP, just from the, yeah, GAP is a system of co for computational discrete algebra. Magma, a software package designed to solve hard problems in algebra. That's fair enough. Uh, as uh, Alexander pointed out, it, it's, the GAP has the same aim, yeah? solve hard problems. But also, I mean, GAP is somehow uh, best in group theory, whereas Magma also has very nice number theoretic, geometric, and combinatoric uh, features. So there is a large number of ordinary character tables available in, in GAP. For example, uh, I, the, the latest I have found is 2,279 character tables in GAP, which are already there. And uh, if you don't find your favorite character table, you push a button and Gap will try hard to produce it for you. And how it does this, I will, I will tell you later. Well, how, how does one compute uh, character tables? Well, you can compute them from scratch. Of course, the group has to be given to you in some sense, in some way, as uh, Heiko already told us this morning, there are various ways of uh, giving a group to GAP or to another mathematician. Um, and from, for many character tables, you just can compute um, 
yeah, for many groups, you just can compute the character table from scratch using the Burnside, Dix, and Schneider algorithm or lattice reduction methods, which go back to Bill Unger uh, and which are used in Magma. Or you can uh, compute them from a generic character table. I will tell you what I mean by this later. Okay. So, and there are also many other ways how to compute a character table which uh, are more ad hoc. So, uh, it's not really, really suitable to tell you. I mean, you, you fiddle around and produce characters and try to find the irreducible ones. <laughs> this is what it comes to, but of course, uh, this is not an algorithm. Yeah. Okay, now. Character tables have a lot of nice features and a lot of uh, and many applications. I'm not going to tell you about the applications of character tables, although that would be very nice, because I'm supposed to tell you about how to compute character tables. But one feature is the or orthogonality relations, and it's a good idea to extend uh, the notion of characters. Uh, yeah, to make it more algebraic, you make a ring out of it. You take all linear combinations of, of irreducible characters with integer coefficients. So this is what is called the set of, uh, or the ring of generalized characters. So you, you re remember, every, every character is a sum of irreducible characters, so a linear combination of irreducible characters with coefficients which are non-negative integers. And so you take also the negative coefficients to get something which is not a character. And on the other hand, every, every, every non-negative linear combination of irreducible characters is a character, which you can easily see by con just combining uh, to the irreducible representations in a direct uh, matrix, direct sum of way. Yeah? Now on this set, or on the set of all class functions. So C of G is the set of all class functions. Inside is the set of the ring of generalized characters. And uh, we can define an inner product. So this is a ring because the product of two characters will be a character again. Uh, the inner product is just essentially uh, a scaled standard permission form. Uh, in the exercises, you will see that psi of g to the minus 1 is the same as psi of g complex conjugate. So this is the standard Hermitian product on the set of class functions uh, scaled by the order of g. And then the set of irreducible characters is an orthonormal basis with respect to this inner product. And in particular, every every care or every class function, every class function can be expanded in this way. So you can just uh, find the ex expansion coefficient at the character chi i of a class function alpha by build, by by computing the inner product of chi i with alpha. This is trivial. And of course, then this is a character if and only if all these. Uh, inner products evaluate to a natural number. And also, which is, which is just a little exercise, uh, if you have a generalized character and it has norm 1, or norm square 1, and the degree is larger than 0, then it must be a character. It must be a character. So if you have generalized characters, you might as well try to find those with small norm, preferably norm 1, and then adjust the degree by a minus sign, if necessary, to get an irreducible character. So this is one of the, the ideas behind this lattice reduction algorithm by Bill Unger. Okay, one of the many things you can do with uh, character tables is compute class multiplication coefficients. So if you have the conjugacy classes, uh, you define the class multiplication coefficient, which depends on three conjugacy classes, 
It's just a set of pairs, x and y. x in the first class, y in the second class, such that the product lies in the third class, and then you just uh, adjust by dividing through this number, which divides this whole uh, size of the set. So this is the class multiplication coefficient. And it is uh, easy to see that you can, you can, you can, uh, you can compute these class multiplication coefficients from the character table. But this is not my point of view here. I want to point in the converse direction. Once you have these class multiplication coefficients, well, just ask gap, find the conjugacy classes, and then compute these numbers. In principle, this is possible with gap. Once you have the group and you can work with the group so that it can uh, enumerate the conjugacy classes and find representatives for them. But it's an old theorem of Burnside that the ordinary character table of G can, on the other hand, be computed from these class multiplication coefficients. And there are three ways to do this. You have K matrices, K square matrices. And then there are eigenvectors, common column eigenvectors of M1 or common row eigenvectors of M1 up to Mk. So these are vectors which are eigenvectors for all of these matrices at the same time. Or the corresponding eigenvalues. From all of these three informations, you can compute the ordinary character table. And so this is what, uh, what's behind the Burnside, Dix, and Schneider algorithm to compute character tables, which is currently still built in into GAP, and which works quite well if the groups are not too large. So what you have to do is you, you have to be able to enumerate the conjugacy classes and let the notation, uh, let the notation be chosen in such a way that the C1 is the conjugacy class containing the trivial element. Uh, then if chi is an irreducible character, this theorem of Burnside tells you that the corresponding row, this is, this is a row in the character table. Yeah, this is a common row eigenvector for all matrices mi. Every irreducible character is a common eigenvector. And this is an uh, eigenvector, and this is the eigenvalue, which depends on chi and on i. Huh? So this is the basic algorithm due to Dixon and Schneider. Compute the matrices mi. Find the common row eigenvectors. Well, an eigenvector, of course, is only defined up to scalar multiples. Yeah. But that doesn't really matter because you know inside this, yeah, you, since you know that the eigenspace is one dimensional because you already know that you have uh, k distinct linearly independent. Yeah, the rows of the, the rows of the uh, character table are linearly independent because uh, they form an orthonormal basis. You already know that these eigenspaces are only one dimensional, these common eigenspaces. So inside, so some scalar multiple of these chi i primes must be an irreducible character, and it's easy to find the scalar multiple. I mean, you just, uh, the, the, the scalar is given if you, if you compute the norm, yeah? And then you, you scale by one over the square root of the norm. This is the basic strategy. Well, and of course, GAP does not really want to compute in complex numbers. Yeah, that's, in complex numbers, you can only compute, uh, well, uh, approximately. So these computations are all done in some finite field and then lifted back to C because there's, it's another property of, of irreducible characters, well, which is easy to see because uh, these are 
So x of g to some i is the identity matrix. Okay, and therefore all, all eigenvalues of this matrix are roots of unity. And therefore the sum of these roots of unity lies in some cycle atomic field. So in, in all character values lie in cycle atomic fields and therefore one can really compute uh, exactly these values. And of course, you may be lucky and to compute one of these uh, M1 uh, MIs, which already has uh, uh, K linearly independent eigen uh, vectors. And you're done. So in fact, you start with some of these MIs and compute the eigenspaces. And then if, the, if not all of the eigenspaces are one dimensional, you, you compute the next one and so on. No, so you don't really have to compute all of them in general. Okay, as I already pointed out, uh, another approach is uh, to use some information about the group G and uh, some representations you already know for, for one reason or the other. For example, if you have a symmetric group, then uh, there is one irreducible representation which comes almost uh, for free. Uh, which is based upon uh, analyzing uh, the permutation representation on in the natural um, yeah, natural space. Uh, and then you, you may want to produce characters from characters you already have, and this is there are various ways. Products of characters are characters. I will tell you why this is the case later, more formally. There is a more sophisticated uh, way of producing new characters from a given character. Uh, given, so you, you always uh, give these by formula. So you have a, a symmetric uh, square and an alternating square of a character defined by these formula. And the fact is that these are characters again if you start with a character. If you have a subgroup of G and if you have a character, then of course restricting the representation of the group G to the group H is a representation of H, and this gives you a character of H. This is another way of finding character. So if you, if you know that your group G, you want to compute the character table, is contained in some larger group where you already have the character table, you might want to restrict characters. And of course, for this, to do this uh, explicitly, you have to know how the elements of H or the representatives of the conjugacy classes of the elements of H fall into which conjugacy classes of G, but this is another thing that can help you in computing. And uh, the dual uh, construction is induction. Uh, the adjoint, if you like, the adjoint construction or dual construction. If you have a character of a subgroup and psi, then you have a, a formula to produce a class function on G called psi of G. And the formula is so well, it's not really complicated if you think about it. So what are these HIs? You look at an element G and you look at its conjugacy class. And this is a set which is invariant under conjugation by H, and therefore it falls into finitely many H conjugacy classes. You take representative, representatives of these, evaluate the given character on these, and then you, you, you scale these uh, appropriately, and then you take the sum. So it's not really as difficult as it looks like. And the point is that this is again a character. This is again a character. An induced character. Okay. And now I want to come to the, the second uh, nice way of producing character tables in a, in a sort of automatic way. So Dixon, the Burnside Dixon Schneider algorithm is in a sense completely automatic. Now you just compute these matrices MI. This is an algorithm 
which works for many groups just by pushing a button. The other one works in all the cases it has been uh, tried on, but uh, there is no guarantee that it will always work. This is this lattice reduction uh, method due to Bill Unger, which is based on Brouwer's induction theorem. So recall the set of generalized characters, all integer linear combinations of the irreducible characters, so a particular subset of the class functions of, of G with values in, in Z in the complex numbers. So this, I already told you that these guys are called generalized characters. Okay, now uh, to state Brouwer's induction theorem, I have to tell you what an elementary subgroup is. A subgroup of G is elementary if it is P elementary for some prime P. And the P elementary subgroup is a group which is a P group, direct product, any cyclic group, which may or may not be P or P prime group. So this is a P elementary subgroup. And an elementary subgroup is a P elementary subgroup, which is P elementary for some prime P. And this uh, script E denotes the set of all elementary subgroups of G. Just to have a convenient notation, you take for, this, for a fixed elementary subgroup E, you take all generalized characters and induce all of them to G and this will be denoted by this symbol. So this is a set of generalized characters. So this is again, of course, a generalized character because the induced character of a character is a character and the induction is obviously uh, linear. And this is Bauer's induction theorem. Every, every generalized character yeah, is a linear combination a Z linear combination of, a, of induced generalized characters induced from elementary subgroups. So of course, if your group G is not elementary, like the monster, yeah, you have many elementary subgroups to consider. Yeah? <laughs> but the point is that, in a sense, inducing from elementary subgroups, which are usually in simple groups, so these are really smaller groups, yeah? contains already all the information. Of course, one would like to have a set of all irreducible characters, but this can, cannot work. Yeah? But anyway, this gives you a source of generalized characters, which at least contains, yeah, yeah, which contains a C basis, yeah? a C basis. And now this gives you this uh, Bill Unger's method to compute the irreducible characters G. In the following, we assume that we have two subsets of generalized characters. The first subset consists of irreducible characters. The second subset consists of any set of irreducible, uh, of generalized characters which are perpendicular to I. So this still denotes the inner product. So what this means is, since the set of irreducible characters is an orthonormal basis, in B, you have only generalized characters whose expansion in the irreducible characters does not involve, involve elements of I. Now, you the, the, the idea is to increase the set i in, in the algorithm until you reach uh, yeah, all the irreducible characters. So these, and uh, now we compute generalized characters, for example, by inducing uh, generalized characters from elementary subgroups or from uh, uh, doing products of generalized characters we already have uh, or from in, yeah, any other sources. Anyway, so this is, this is left to your intuition. And then it's easy to, find, to, to, to project the set of characters we have produced uh, to 
iperp, just using the inner product. We expand all the uh, all the, the elements of L and just delete those uh, those um, components which involve elements of I. This is the project key. This is easy. And so the new set L is already automatically perpendicular to I. And now you have a lattice, finitely generated abelian group. You use the LLL algorithm with this inner product I have given to you, Lenstra, Lenstra, Lovac. Yeah, to reduce, uh, to find vectors of small norm, to find, to find a new basis which consists hopefully of more vectors of norm one and another uh, set of vectors which satisfies this. So, of course, so I prime consists of uh, irreducible characters. So if you have found the vector of norm one inside L, then you adjust, uh, you adjust it by a scalar to get an irreducible character, as I have told you. And therefore, uh, you get, get more irreducible characters as you had before, as you had before provided. LLL gives you new vectors of norm one. And then you replace I by the new set and B by B prime, which is automatically perpendicular uh, to I union I prime. Okay, this is the basic strategy. And the point is, this procedure terminates by Brauer's induction theorem, provided you produce all induced characters of all elementary subgroups. Of course, well, it's, I mean, you have to be clever. You don't really want all elementary subgroups. You first have, uh, you just want them up to conjugation and then you, you don't want them one inside the other. I mean, and things like that. In, a, in some sense, you, you have to use an irredundant subset of these. And you don't uh, use all of them right from the beginning, because this computation would take much too long. Yeah? And if you don't succeed in, in, in one of these steps, you produce new characters by looking at new uh, elementary subgroups. Or you might, uh, uh, you might use a starting set which is computed by the Burnside-Dixon-Schneider algorithm if you find some, some common eigenvectors uh, already by it. Yeah? But of course, the LLL does not really guarantee to find all vectors of norm one. And according to Anger, uh, I mean, he has computed really impressively many character tables of very large groups, and he always succeeded. No? But if this algorithm would terminate with a set B, which does not consist of vectors of norm one, but still together with the irreducible characters, uh, uh, gives a basis. But then, of course, you can always try to find all these factorizations. This is, of course, in, in only feasible if, if B is not too large. And if you find such factorizations, you can, uh, yeah, one of these A's, in a sense, must contain the information uh, on the missing irreducible. Quite recently, Thomas Breuer, Gunter Malle, and Eamon O'Brien have recomputed the character tables of the sporadic groups, except for the baby monster and the monster, by just using Unger's implementation. And of course, by using, uh, and not just for the sporadic groups, but for all of the groups in the atlas, except for some of the very large ones. This was uh, sort of, this computation was uh, prompted by, um, yeah, by a discussion with Ser, who didn't, who, who claimed, uh, or he, who complained, who complained that uh, there are no proofs in the atlas. And he wanted to use the atlas and he wanted to have proofs. So these guys, uh, yeah, started this, uh, how, how, would you, how would you call it, independent computation of the character tables and they did not find 
any single mistake that wasn't known before. It's, so you can trust the atlas now. Yeah, has been. So this is this is experimental science, like uh, the boss of this institute told us this morning. So we are doing experiments, and we can sort of independently uh, confirm the experiments by other group of people. Yeah. And yeah. What is a generic character table? A generic character table, by this, I mean, yeah, this is for me is quite a general uh, notion. It can mean uh, a computer program uh, for computing the character table of an in individual group if there are some uh, recursive formula given. For example, Mernha Nakayama type formula for the character values of the symmetric and alternating groups or for the other wild groups. So you just implement these recursive formula. And someone gives you, well, I want to, to find the character table of uh, S57. Then GAP starts uh, using these rec recursive formula. Of course, it hasn't pre-computed the character table of F S57. And I'm not quite sure whether it would be able to do this. And nobody wants to look at this character table, actually. Anyway, this is how it works. Or you might have a parameterized character table for an infinite series of groups. So this is, a, this is something actually which comes from the linear lustig theory. There are always such param parameterized character tables. But for SL2Q, it was known a long time ago. This was already computed by, by Schur. And then the conjugacy classes of these groups are in a suitable way parametrized. The character values are parametrized. The characters are parametrized, and the character values are given in terms of these parameters. And then in order to find, yeah, and uh, these generic character tables for these groups of Lie type for these series. So what you do is you fix a Lie rank or a Lie type, a while group if you like, and, uh, and then you let the Q vary, so the underlying field can be any, in a sense. Also, even for SL2Q, you need two generic character tables, one for Q even and one for Q odd. And if the while group gets larger, you need more, but only finitely many in any case. And then the inv individual tables are obtained by specializing the parameters in particular Q. Here is a nice example. So this is the generic character table of SL2Q, Q even. This is the only one which fits on one slide. So here are parameters for the classes. So I should tell you. So A and M, M, M is a parameter. Yeah, M and N are parameters for the characters. A and B are parameters for the classes, and they run between one and Q minus two half, respectively, respectively one and Q half. Theta is a root of unity, but it's, <laughs> I don't know, if it's a mathematical object, it's a, it's a generic root of unity, a Q minus first root of unity. It's only there if you specify the Q, but you can write it down anyway. Yeah. And uh, then, of course, just to, to show you what these classes are, so these are the diagonal matrices with... Uh, corresponding to different uh, powers of a primitive element. And these classes are, yeah, well, they, they are not diagonal matrices, only if you uh, go to a field extension of, uh, of degree two, you find them as diagonal matrices. So con in, in uh, over fq squared, these matrices are conjugate to these. Yeah? So this is SL2Q, if you specialize Specialize Q to four. You get the generic. You get the, the real character table of SL24, which is A5. This is nicer, isn't it? Because A5 already had five rows and five columns. Yeah. Here I only need four. Yeah, because uh, well, Q minus two over two is one, but Q half is, is two. Yeah. If Q is four. Now, Chevy is a computer algebra system, which is uh, 
supposed to work with these uh, generic character tables, and so it, it, has, a, it has a collection with, uh, of these generic character tables and uh, programs uh, to manipulate them, like in using characters, tensoring characters, in generic character tables, specializing characters and things like that. But um, it also has a part which works with a related structure like Coxeter groups, Iwa Hori Hecke algebras, and, and other related structure. So the, this part is the Coxeter group part is currently based on GAP3, and the generic character table part is currently based on Maple. But there will be a GAP4 version. We are dreaming of this, but I don't know when. Anyway. So here are the authors of this Chevy package. Yeah, so this is about everything I wanted to tell you about uh, uh, ordinary character tables. Here are some references. Uh, you have already seen this handbook of computational group theory. Uh, this is the paper by Unger where he uh, describes his algorithm. And uh, yeah. Thank you very much.